Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna do an introduction to our advanced research course here at RTHS. So first of all, congratulations. You have decided to participate in this exciting endeavor and we're really excited that you guys are gonna be joining us and that you're willing to take the plunge into advanced research on your own. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what scientific research is, um, some helpful hints to get started in this program and with research on your own. We're gonna do an overview of how to make testable questions in your research and generate hypotheses, which is I'm sure something you've learned before in your other science classes, but we're going to get a little bit more specific with how to make hypotheses for scientific research that you're going to be doing independently on your own in a lab. And then of course we're going to do a brief overview of the course and what's expected of you in this advanced research class. All right, so you should have already participated in the what is research discussion that we've assigned you on Flipgrid. So this is a conversation you'll have with other students. So I hope you pause this video and you go ahead and participate in that before you go back and review the rest of these materials. Now you've probably seen in other science classes some version of the scientific method. Maybe it looks like a circle like this where you start with an observation about something in the world or a general phenomena and then you ask a question, then you generate a hypothesis, then you experiment, then you analyze, and then you conclude which can then lead to more observations. Now unfortunately this version is not what happens in the real world. It is a little bit more complicated than this uh, and sometimes getting started and choosing a question to investigate is one of the hardest parts. Um, but in this program, we're going to work this work through this process with you guys um, to make sure that you are able to choose a question to investigate, identify hypotheses, make testable predictions, and generate an experiment that um, is going to test that hypothesis, um, collect data, determine your results, analyze the validity of those results, um, and then of course determine if your results support the hypothesis. So your scientific method may look a little bit more like this um, than we, what we saw in the previous slide. So we're going to be talking about null hypotheses today. Um, and later on in the course, we'll get into statistical analysis and why that's important in a research course like this. All right, so as far as basic hypothesizing goes, um, later on we'll help you through the process of generating ideas and creating a question to research. Um, but when you get to the hypothesizing point, you might have learned in other classes that you have to create a hypothesis in a specific way. Like for example, you might have to say if then, and then make um, a prediction or base it on research. And all of that is a good guideline, but there are some other things we wanna pay attention to specifically for this course. Um, you wanna make sure you state whatever exposure or treatment that you're gonna measure as specifically as possible. And then you wanna state the outcome as specifically as possible as well. A good hypothesis should be a prediction and it should be testable. And those are the two main things that we're gonna focus on in this, um, in this course. So a good hypothesis can be tested, which means it's either um, verifiable or falsifiable. And we'll talk about statistically what that means. You can never prove anything with statistics, but we'll talk about how to reject certain hypotheses. Um, and hypotheses are not moral or ethical questions. Um, they shouldn't be too broad, but they should be just specific enough for your experiment. And it's gonna be a prediction of what you are doing. Um, and even if your hypothesis is shown to be um, rejected, that can be something that is valuable for scientific experimentation. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, so when we get into a specific experiment here, this is a test that was done, it was, the paper was published this past year with the Mediterranean field cricket, and um, that's what it looks like up in the corner here. And they wanted to do a test with personality traits and how um, certain systems, so certain uh, neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin actually affected um, behavioral outputs of the crickets. And so they did this trying to address a gap that the scientists had in their knowledge um, about how these brain chemicals actually affected um, personalities and if they got behavioral change out of this. Um, so this is from their paper that they published. We experimentally explored how personality was influenced by alterations in two monoamine systems, dopamine and serotonin. This was done using ropinirol and fluoxetine, two common human pharmaceuticals. Now, I don't know them, but apparently they're common enough to be tested in this paper. Um, so that was what they wanted to do. Now, after they create the idea of their experiment, they're gonna state a hypothesis. Now, when you read scientific literature, you may not see a hypothesis in an if-then statement like we've learned in classes before now, and you may not even see it at the first part of the introduction. This is in the introduction, but this is where they hypothesize what's gonna happen. And you notice the language is a little bit different from hypotheses that you might have seen in the past. So they said, based on previous work, we predicted that the 
that both of our monoamine manipulations would affect personality by increasing cricket activity and aggressiveness and that our serotonin manipulation would increase exploration tendency. So you notice the treatment effect that they're giving, you notice what they predict out of it, and you notice that it is measurable um, as they will go on in the paper to tell you how they're gonna measure aggressiveness and activity. So when we create hypotheses for experiments, there's lots of different hypotheses you can make in order to statistically analyze the experiment later on. Um, but the base that we're gonna start with in this course is creating a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is sometimes abbreviated as H naught or H with a sub zero there. And then the alternative hypothesis or sometimes called the experimental hypothesis will be um, H with a little alpha there. So. For your null hypothesis, those of you who have done AP Bio or maybe statistics might have heard of this before, um, but this is the idea that the experimental uh, treatment will have no effect or there will be no difference in the treatment groups or in whatever you're analyzing. Um, so you would state something like there is no me me measurable dis difference in the placebo and the experimental medication if you were testing the effects of medication. But our alternative hypothesis, and often this is what experimenters want to see, um, but you don't say you know, your wants and your needs in your scientific paper, um, there is a difference in the placebo and the experimental medication. So that would be an alternative um, hypothesis. So we'll use these for inferential statistics where we will measure our results and then apply statistical testing models to these hypotheses to see whether we can accept um, or we can reject certain hypotheses. So the alternative hypothesis is gonna be a statement of what the hypothesis test is, is gonna establish, and it's the opposite of the null hypothesis. And we can only reach our alternative hypothesis if our null hypothesis is rejected. So later on when we talk about statistics in this course, we'll talk about how to reject a null hypothesis. Um, but again, sometimes the alternative hypothesis is typically what the researcher wants to see in the experiment. Um, and again, remember, you can never prove anything with statistics or in this case with the scientific experimentation, but you can accept or reject certain models. All right, so here are some examples of null hypotheses which you guys are gonna practice writing a little later on. So if you wanna do an experiment to see if there was greater weight loss in patients, um, if they dieted or if they exercised, you could say for the null hypothesis, there is no difference in weight loss between the two treatment groups. If you wanted to test whether smoking during pregnancy uh, affected a child's head size, you could do a survey. Um, and then you could say for your null hypothesis, the mean head size for children whose mothers smoke five or more cigarettes a day during pregnancy are the same as uh, the mean for those who, whose mothers do not smoke. All right, and then effectiveness of a drug and on the heart rate of an individual. You could say the resting heart rate of patients given during uh, if patients given the drug are equal to the resting heart rates of untreated or controlled patients. So all these are null hypotheses, which means they're predicting there will be no effect with the treatment group. Okay, you guys are gonna practice writing your own hypotheses for certain experiments in a little bit. I wanted to give you a few helpful hints in this course and in scientific research before we get started. Remember, coming into this class, you don't have to be an expert in your field of study. You don't even have to know what you wanna research yet. You just have to have a willingness to explore something scientifically. So. It's helpful if you are a little bit knowledgeable about the topic you're interested in, but if you don't know what topic you're gonna to start with, that's okay. It's more that you wanna do research and that you are passionate about investigating and learning about the scientific process. So you are ready to research on your own if you are here and you wanna be here. Um, you need to have an open mind and be ready to learn, um, but there is so much you can gain and so much you can learn by involving yourself in this process and diving uh, headfirst into your own independent research that we really, really encourage you uh, to take this opportunity. So when you actually get to doing your own research, there's plenty of different fields and types of research that you can get involved in. Now the goal at the end of this course is that you'll be able to conduct your own independent research within a laboratory setting, and that eventually you will then share that research within some sort of science fair competition, such as the Intel or Regeneron Science Fair. Um, so these are some of the categories that you could actually enter in for those competitions. And you notice there's a lot of them, and there's a lot of different opportunities and a lot of different directions you can go in. So I encourage you to look through on those websites to learn about the guidelines and regulations but of course we'll help you through those once you start generating the actual research question or project all right 
So let's talk logistics. What are you getting yourselves into? So the point of this course, Advanced Research, is for you to be able to practice the tools you will need to conduct research in a laboratory setting under the guidance of a lab supervisor, university professor, grad student, whoever you are um, going to be working with outside of this school. This is not research that you can conduct just with the materials you have here. It'll be done in a truly uh, uh, legitimate, authentic uh, research setting, and you guys are going to be driving the primary uh, goals of the research projects that you uh, designate. But by the end of the course, you should be able to define and design an appropriate problem for scientific research within the constraints and limitations of the laboratory setting, utilize the design thinking process and the scientific method to solve problems and evaluate scientific research both qualitatively and quantitatively, and then of course, you're going to develop a risk written research proposal supported by scientific literature for an external research internship experience outside RTHS. So by doing this course, we expect you to be able and ready to go out into the world, into the lab. And this online por portion is for you guys to get that basic knowledge you need, practice a few skills, um, and then you will be equipped and ready to do research in these independent settings. All right, so this course is broken down into five modules. Um, the first one is about designing research. The second is about ethics and research. The third, reading scientific literature. Fourth, communicating research. And then fifth, preparing your research. And in this fifth module, you're actually going to be contacting people in labs and setting up your, um, hopefully, your initial placement in whatever experience you choose. We're going to be doing the bulk of this course in Google Classroom. You're going to see the different modules laid out in the classwork section. You can click around and find this once we're assigned, we've assigned the course to you. And there'll be a few assignments within each module. And we expect you to work at your own pace on those. All of this work is going to be conducted outside of a classroom setting. So this is an online based course, but we will have a few meeting opportunities throughout the semester and those dates will be provided at the start of the course. Now, when you look into each module, you're gonna have a document that kind of gives an overview of all the things you're expected to do, as well as um, the tasks and any assessments that you may have. Um, this full course, we are hoping to be able to give you course credit for this as well, um, so stay tuned for the logistics on that. All right, so our expectations for you in this course are to complete the assignments during your own time, meeting several deadlines within the course, so we will set up specific deadlines for certain things. We expect you to collaborate effectively online with other students, so there'll be certain assignments like our Flipgrid conversations or online conversations where you'll be talking to other students who are also doing this program with you. And then of course we expect you to uphold RTHS's academic integrity standards um, and we'll be more specific about those in the syllabus. All right, thank you guys so much for watching and we look forward to having you in this experience and in this course and please let me know if you have any questions.